This is Generation Stadia, giving you that daily dose of everything and anything cloud gaming related and today we need to have a bit of a discussion. I'm sure some of you are aware of the topic at hand as it's about a tweet that recently had Stadia trending across the world. Sadly, it wasn't for the best of reasons and we'll get right to that. But before we begin, I just need to make it very clear that this is my personal opinion of the subject. Whether you agree or disagree with me on the subject is up to you, and I have no problem having a discussion on this and I'm looking forward to seeing some of your comments in the comments section below. With that out of the way, let's begin by talking about the tweet. It comes from Alex Hutchinson, who's the creative director at Stadia Games and Entertainment Montreal Studio. The tweet in question stated the following. Streamers worried about getting their content pulled because they used music they didn't pay for should be more worried by the fact that they're streaming games they didn't pay for as well. It's all gone as soon as publishers decide to enforce it. The real truth is that streamers should be paying the developers and publishers of the game they stream. They should be buying a license like any real business and paying for the content they use. As you can imagine, this tweet really did not go over well with the majority of the gaming community. And it wasn't long after the tweet was posted that it started gaining some serious attention from bigger outlets. But before we start talking about that, let's quickly focus on the actual topic at hand. In case you haven't been seeing what's been happening to Twitch lately, recently they've been getting a lot of takedown DMCA strikes to bigger streamers who are playing music without having the license to do so. It's very much like the same situation that happened here on YouTube not long ago. The music industry is finally realizing just how much attention Twitch is getting and now they want their share of the pie. They've already done it to YouTube and you can bet that they'll try and do it to any other video or streaming platform that gets enough attention. But to keep a long story short, this move has made a ton of streamers delete hundreds if not thousands of video on demand files that were on their profiles of previous streams. Clearly this move is affecting a ton of people on Twitch and a lot of big names are involved as well. In certain cases like Dan's Gaming, he's been with Twitch since 2009 and is now being forced to delete every single video on demand since then. And this is where Alex Hutchins tweet comes in. To be perfectly clear, I'm just a guy who plays video games and makes videos on YouTube. I'm not a lawyer, but from my understanding, publishers would be within their right to do this as well. To prove this point, I'll actually be linking in the description below a video of an actual lawyer discussing this very subject. Hoglaw's channel does a fantastic breakdown of video game laws and if you're interested in the legality of it all, I highly recommend you check his channel out. But let's put the law to the side. While he is technically correct that publishers could charge streamers to stream their games, this really was a bit of a tone deaf statement to make out loud on Twitter of all platforms. I could totally understand wanting to have this discussion in depth with others, but Twitter's a place for hot takes and reactions, and the limited character count does not allow for any meaningful discussion to really be had. Now when it comes to the statement itself, yeah, he's probably correct that this is a possibility and it is something some people should probably consider in the future, but by no means would I agree with his statement. I don't think that streamers should be paying developers to play their games. And there's many reasons I believe that. The first of which is simply put, they're doing you a favor by advertising your game for you. And while I do agree there are instances where streamers get attached to a game and that game is then correlated with them, at the end of the day, it's the player themselves who are really selling the content. I'd even argue that in some cases the player is the content and the game is just the backdrop. Making a move like this also comes with its own slew of problems. This would never take off unless every single publisher and game developer in the world would agree to charging streamers. Why? Well, because streamers would probably find something else to play if they didn't. And before you think streamers need to be playing these big budget AAA titles, that's not true whatsoever. You can look at Fall Guys and even better, look at Among Us. It's an old indie title that came out years ago, but look at it now. Because of streamers playing the game on their own choice, that game is now one of the biggest talking points on social media. 
and it's probably why developers and publishers see some sort of value in paying streamers to play the game and not the other way around. We live in a world where EA was paying Ninja and other streamers millions to play Apex Legends. Clearly, there's a lot of business executives out there crunching the numbers and thinking this is totally worth it just for the amount of attention it can get. So to try and go against this is going to be such a monumental task that I doubt it would ever happen. Well, actually, I shouldn't say ever, because it already has happened and it failed miserably. I think we can all remember when Nintendo tried to pull this off with their Nintendo Creators program. Basically, if you wanted to cover Nintendo games, you needed to agree to giving them 30% of any ad revenue money you made. This was introduced back in 2017 and was reversed in 2018. If you're wondering why, well, it's because it was immensely, and I mean immensely, unpopular for them to make this move among creators and the audience alike. There would be an insane amount of backlash if a big publisher tried to pull this off yet again. But with that to the side, let's talk about Stadia specifically and what the aftermath of this tweet really was. Sadly, Stadia got dragged into this conversation even though it really shouldn't have been. Alex was simply stating his opinion, which he has every right to. Not only that, but on the legal side of things, he's correct. This is something that most content creators slash streamers should be thinking of. While I can sit here and tell you why I don't think it'll happen anytime soon, if ever, there's really no guarantee of that ever being the case. Publishers and developers are the ones with the power at the end of the day, and if they choose to try and charge people, they're well within their right to do so. Even if I and many of you don't agree with it, his statement is true. Now obviously, it's not a very popular opinion among the gaming community as a whole, and due to his old bio, which by the way has now been changed to more clearly reflect his position at Stadia, his statement had ramifications for Stadia as a whole. Being labeled as simply creative director of Stadia brought a lot of issues and it made people start making clickbait headlines without really doing any research. There were plenty of opinions and articles made stating that this is the route that Stadia is going to choose to take in the future and that's not the case. Google's already trying to distance themselves from that opinion even. But sadly, the damage is done, and people have already started making these big headlines and videos discussing the subject without any of the actual research required to discuss it properly. Not only that, but Stadia already had a problem with big YouTubers trashing it, and now we're gonna be getting big streamers doing the same. This sucks, and frankly speaking, as someone who covers Stadia, I'm not looking forward to the countless videos from both supporters of Stadia and haters discussing this. The only reason I'm talking about it now is because I was asked to, and this will probably be the last time I discuss this topic. At the end of the day, there's little to no doubt that this is going to hurt Stadia's reputation even further, but I also don't think it's anything serious that can't be looked over. The gaming community tends to have a pretty short attention span when it comes to controversy, and I'm sure something else will pop along next week that will become the next big headline. It just sucks that this is going to add to the list of things people start misquoting and misrepresenting when talking about Stadia. Either way, that covers pretty much everything I have to say on the topic. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful at all, be sure to hit that like button as it really does help the channel out. And if you're wanting more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. Today's end of video question is simply going to be about the topic at hand. How do you feel of what was said and what do you think is right or wrong? Do you see a future where publishers are charging streamers to play their games through license or revenue share? Let me know in the comments section below. As always, this has been Generation Stadia, giving you that daily dose of everything and anything cloud gaming related. The Gen S community is over 5,100 strong and growing by the day, and until next time, I'll catch you in the clouds.